what is going on guys thank you so much for watching this video if you're watching this on youtube please take two seconds to hit the like button it really helps uh, us content creators out if you can subscribe to the channel uh, i would really appreciate it we're trying to get those numbers up so that we get access to more tools um the subscription count um is one of the things that youtube cares about the most so if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do uh it would really help us out in the long run and i appreciate you for being here regardless so thank you for stopping by however you found this video uh today we're going to be building a pre-release limited kit um a lot of the local shops here in vancouver offer two extra set boosters with the purchase of a pre-release kit now each lgs is or you know kitchen table group is going to do limited environments differently for the most part we don't include the set boosters in the kit because the um kind of structure of limited is that you get six packs and you have to build stuff out of that so we do have two extra set boosters i'm gonna open these right away so that we can take a look at the contents but i'm gonna put them off to the side once we've opened them so that you know we can build a true limited set um new limited deck with our pre-release kit here so let's just open these bad boys and see what we've got we've got a nice little oh wait there we go got a nice little bilbo art card Okay, so these I believe are backwards, yeah. So there's a foil swamp, nice. That's going into the commander deck. Lash of the Balrog. Improvised club. Dundane blade. Ents fury. Ooh, long list of the ants. That's a fun one. Ent drought basin. Horses of the Bruinen. Sauron the White. Many Partings, the full art, full extended art. And our rare is the Mines of Moria. And our foil is Ugla Ugluk the White Hand. Nice. And then, oh, we got a list card. Elephant Grass. Cumulative upkeep. Black creatures cannot attack you. Non-black creatures cannot attack you unless their controllers pay an additional two for each attacking creature. That might be an interesting open. I know that some of these um, anti-goad, whatever you want to call this ability, some of these cards are pretty spicy. So that might be an interesting one. We'll open the second pack. Come on now. Some of these are... I just feel like I don't know what I'm doing with my hands when I'm trying to open them. Get that new card smell. Delicious. We've got an inherited ring up art card a foil basic planes Sirith Ungol patrol nasty end Gimli's fury Gimli's axe nice little Gimli theme great hall of the citadel Landrovel horizon witness Quick Beam, Upstart Ent, Entish Restoration, and our rare, oh no, this isn't a rare, uh, Golem Patient Plotter, next one's our rare, Galadriel of Lothor Lothlorien, nice, and our shiny is a Surrounded by Orcs, cool, Some good finds, I'm glad I got that Swamp actually out of all the cards in there i need one more uh lord of the rings swamp for the, my commander deck and then we're set on lands there 
Uh, I'm going to put these off to the side because I don't want to include them in my limited build. So we're just going to throw them over here. And then we'll open this bad boy up. Okay. So, if you've never done a pre-release event or played Limited Magic, basically what you get is one of these little kits. It's everything you need in this box, except for like sleeves and, and extra dye and stuff. So, be mindful. Bring some accessories along with you. If you're going to the LGS, if you're doing it at home, obviously you'll have some more stuff there. You rip it open and it says, One Ring to Rule Them All. And you open it up, and it's got a nice little quote from, uh, I believe, Bilbo. Talking to Frodo about it being dangerous business going out your door. And then you get a bunch of punch cards, which, um, you know, aren't really super useful, these tokens. But this one in particular with the one ring, um, there's a lot of ring bearer action and shenanigans going on in this set. So having this... Uh, one token here is, is pretty handy to have around. You take all this out, and it's got a nice little image in the box there. Some people kind of open these up and flatten them and, and uh, you know, display them. I like to close it back up and put it on my shelf behind me. There, I've got all the, like, big box products that I've opened over the years. Uh, but this is your pre-release kit. So inside here, there will be packs, um, a promo. You get two promos with the Lord of the Rings set. One of them you're not allowed to use in your pre-release event. It is the Bilbo's birthday full art promo. You're not allowed to use that in your pre-release events. Um, when we did pre-release here at our place, we let people include them because they're fun. Generally... You get to use everything in this box a couple of times in the last year or so. Wizards has had it so that there's like an extra special thing in the box and those things you're not allowed to use. This is the same thing. There's going to be two promo foil stamped promos with the year on them um, and you're only allowed to use one of them. So you open this up, you get a D20 or a spin down life counter. There's four different colorways, and then there's one really unique one, which we didn't get, unfortunately, but I've seen people open them, and it looks really cool, so doped for that. And then you've got a nice little deck box to kind of have around with you at the event. You put your sideboard in there, which is everything you don't use in your main deck. For pre-release of uh, builds or limited environments, anything that you don't put in your main deck is included in your sideboard so definitely keep track of that hi bud what's up what's up what do you need um inside the box other than the packs you'll also get this nice little cheat sheet this thing really helps you uh build your limited deck just a few guidelines of what you're looking for 15 to 18 creatures 5 to 8 other spells and then kind of a basic graph on what a mana curve on a 40 card deck looks like um, again we're building a limited deck so it is 40 cards minimum um, you can play more than that usually you're aiming for 17 lands so you're looking at um, you know 24 to 23 playables and yeah, this little cheat sheet, it's got a nice little picture on the back. Um, but if you haven't built a limited deck before, definitely use this cheat sheet. Refer to it as much as you want because it's very handy and it helps you build something strong. You get a ring token. Again, these are like perforated at the top so you can break this part off and use this as your ring bearer token. You put this on the card that is your ring bearer. Uh, pretty handy and then you've got a nice little deck divider and then we'll look this is our promos here I'm gonna go close on the camera our foil promo is the ring goes south which is a really bad card really bad card 
not playable in almost any instance. Um, sometimes when you open a limited box, you'll want to lean on your promo because it's obviously going to be a rare or mythic. Um, but sometimes it's easy like this one where, you know, we're probably not going to build around this at all. So pretty simple. Sometimes you get a little locked in in your mind of what you want to build based on your pre-release um, promo card. This one is not swaying us one way or the other. And then our Bilbo's birthday foil promo is Frodo Baggins. So every pre-release kit comes with two of these. This one you can use in your deck. This one for the most part, you're not allowed to use, but if you're playing like a friend in a friendly environment, um, you might be allowed to use it. If they, if you're play, just playing with friends, if you're playing in the store, you're not allowed to use that. Here is a nice little promo code for three packs on Arena. If someone would like to claim that, and then yeah, you get six packs, draft boosters and you have to build the best deck you can with what you open so let's check these out and get to building i'm just gonna take a little slurp all right pack number one Let's sit up for this bad boy. Let's sit up for this. My dog is scrounging under the couch for some reason. Pack number one. We get Treason of Isengard. So usually I like to stack things in Wooberg order for the first little bit, and then we kind of pull it apart and look at the full order. We got a Took Reaper, Elven Farsight, that's pretty good. Cast Into Fire is also good. Um, let's go close on this. Morgul Knife Wound, Nimrodel Watcher, Woe's Pathfinder, Eastmark Cavalier, Snarling Warg, Yorith the Healing House, Ring Sight, nice, Golem's Bite, and our rare is Gloin Dwarf Emissary. That's pretty good. Ooh, we got a Mythic Land. Our foil slot has a Mount Doom in it. Very cool. And then we get a swamp and a ring token. I believe every pack comes with a ring token, but I might be mistaken. I think it's just like sometimes. Uh, hold on. I need to lean a bit more forward. And we need to look at these cards a little bit better. I'm stacking them like we're just opening and I'm not stacking them like I'm going to build a deck out of them so let me just adjust a bit all right pack number two we start with an Arwen's gift nice chance met elves our green's looking okay. Breaking the Fellowship. Easterling Vanguard. Captain Umbar. Protector of Gondor. Brandywine Farmer. Eastmark Cavalier. Battle Scarred Goblin. Eagles of the North. Ooh, Celeborn the Wise. That's a good pick. Eowyn, Lady of Rohan. Mariaduck, Brandybuck. Ooh, Dawn of the New Age. This is a really great mythic enchantment. And our 
Wait. Why is there a basic land not foiled in the foil slot? What the heck? Garbage. All right, pack number three. Obviously our uh, green and our white is building up pretty solid here. If we were using that promo Frodo Baggins, I think it would be a no brainer. Uh, this is pack number three. We start with a dreadful storm. Errand Rider of Gondor, Galadrimbo, Swarming of Moria, Shelob's Ambush, Soothing of Smeagol, Wizard's Rockets, Knights of Dol Amroth, Troll of Khazadum, Battlescarred Goblin, Ooh, a Saruman the White, Stone of Eric, Elrond of Rivendell, One Ring to Rule Them All. And in the darkness, bind them. This is a cool card, especially in a limited environment because there's a lot. We got a full art island, um, especially in a limited environment because you don't get a lot of board wipes in limited. This one has a really nice turn to destroy all non-legendary creatures. So we could do like a legendary thing. Um, so far we have one, two, three legendaries in blue. We have two legendaries in green and one legendary in white. Oi, weirdo. What are you doing? All right, this is pack number four. We start with a Gimli's Fury. Greyhaven Navigator, Bulwarts of Oz Goliath, Galadrim Guide, Fire of Orthanc, The Black Breath, Woe's Pathfinder, Wizard Rockets, Nimble Hobbit, Golem's Bite again, Stone of Eric again. Ooh, well, there we go. There's an actual Frodo Baggins that we can use. And a Pippin Guard of the Citadel. Protector of Gondor, Foil. And we've got a Mountain and a Treasure Token. Well, I'm tempted to kind of try. We don't have... We do have two Wizards Rockets. So we could splash to a third color. Pack number five. Pack number five. Esquire of the King. Protector of Gondor. Brandywine Farmer. War Beast of Gargroth. Claim the Precious. Great removal spell. Deceive the Messenger. Took Reaper. Inherited Envelope. Oh, there's some mana fixing. Uh, many Partings. Good mana grab. Great Hall. That's another good mana fixer. Grimma Worm Tongue. Long List of the Ents. Oh! Oh my god. Is this one of the Nazgul I need? What luck is that? Holy! That's beautiful. And then we've got War of the Last Alliance. And Mountain Ring Token. That is such good luck. Oh my god, I can't believe. What did I need? Let me just check my list real quick. I'm only short two Nazgul's for my whole deck. It is one of the ones I needed. 33. 333. Three, three. What are you doing back there? Get it. Get it. You weirdo? It makes me want to play black in this limited deck, but I don't think I can. I think with the Frodo Baggins and the Maria Dock, I think I've got to play like a Halfling 
Okay, this is our last pack, so we'll see what we get. We might be able to pivot a little bit. Right now I'm thinking white green halfling food. Um, we'll see what's in here. Our first card is Treason of Isengard. Then Bag and Porter. Er Erebor Flamesmith. Sam's Desperate Rescue. An Ilithian Kingfisher. Escape from Orthanc. Chancemet Elves. Troll of Khazad Doom. Knights of Dol Amaroth. Oh, Lembus. This is great in our Halfling deck. Uh, we have a Malher Urukai Captain. A Landrovel, Landrovel Horizon Witness. Another Grimma Worm Tongue. A Horn of the Mark is our rare. And then we get a Plains and a Food. Well, friends. Um, so let's take a look. What I like to do is I like to take a look at your multi cards. See if anything in that realm so we've got ring site um these are our lands so we've got a black red legendary land we also have some wizard rockets some stones inherited envelope gives us one mana of any color so that's very strong um lembas which is really good with um the halfling synergies we've got going on. And then Pippin, Guard of the Citadel, says uh, he's a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Vigilance and Ward 1. Tap. Another target creature you control gains protection from the card type of your choice until end of turn. And then we've got a more Urukai Captain. Um, I think Lembes and Inherited Envelope are both very strong. The only problem I have with this Frodo Baggins is that he doesn't care about food. It's really like the Samwise that cares about food. Um, and I don't think that there's really anything else. So let me take a look at our green cards real quick. I want to read Mariadoc again. Whenever one or more halflings you control attack a player, create a food token. And they're only two mana. Um, we have Elven Farsight, which is really good. We have Many Partings, which is really good. Brandywine Farmer, we have two of. We have two Woes Pathfinders. Mariadoc. There's our second Brandywine Farmer, our second Woes Pathfinder. The ring goes south. The ring tempts you, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X land cards, where X is the number of legendary creatures you control. Put those lands onto the battlefield tapped and the rest on the bottom of your library. So this could be explosive. Um, if we're playing the legendary game, we could perhaps, um, work with that a little bit. Chance Met Elves have an interesting scry synergy. So let's take a look at our white because Frodo is green white. We're looking for halflings and food synergies. Um, Escape from Orthanc is a pretty decent combat trick. War of the Last Alliance. Search your library for a legendary creature card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. You get to do that twice. I like that. I feel like we can just play some legendaries. Um, Landrovel says... Whenever two or more creatures you control attack a player, target attacking creature without flying gains flying. So that could be really good. 
Um, Took Reaper is a halfling. Nimble Hobbit is a halfling. Dawn of a New Age reads, One in a white for an enchantment. Dawn of the New Age enters with a hope counter on it for each creature you control. At the beginning of your end step, remove a hope counter. If you do draw a card, then if Dawn of the New Age has no hope counters on it, sacrifice it, you gain four life. That's pretty good. Um, Eowyn is a legendary... We have two Took Reapers. So I'm just going to say, let's look and count these two piles. So we're gonna put the, the blue, black, and red aside for a second. Uh, we have a couple artifacts. We have one land. We have a Frodo. I mean, we have... We have some mana fixing to give up. Because we have these two Woes Pathfinders. And, um... They are not going to trigger our legendary, nor our... Halfling synergies, so and if we're not splashing um, If we're not splashing a third color, we don't maybe need that much mana fixing. So we have two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty playables right now. Um, we could splash blue and add in our Pippin. Twenty-one. So let's take a look at our blues. Do we have any halflings or legendaries? have some legendaries. Elrond is interesting here. This triggers a scry on every creature entering the battlefield. That's 23. 22. Uh, this is 23. I do like I do like Deceive the Messenger, but it's not fantastic. I would consider putting Sauron in there. So we have one two, three, four, many pairings lets us get any basic land, right? Search your library for a basic land. Okay. So as long as we put basic island, we'll be fine. We have two, five, 10, 20, 30, wait, what? Two, five, 10, 15, 20, 24 playables. So we, we might need to cut one. Um, hmm. I feel like we can't go below 17 lands because we are going to be mana starved already. So... That's important for us. We could think about including some wizard's rockets as well. Uh, 
Um, I do think that our our Ringo South is probably the easiest cut, which puts us at 23 playables, exactly the right number. Um, yeah, I think War of the Last Alliance is interesting because it lets us get you know a majority of our creatures one, two, three, four, five, six, seven legendary creatures. Brandywine Farmer makes us foods. Mary Doc Brandy Book uh, makes us foods. Took Reaper makes us, uh, tempts us. Um, Woe's Pathfinder gives us mana. Eowyn, uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature gains your choice of first strike vigilance. Okay, that's really good. The rest of it doesn't matter because it's a, a trigger ability. Um, Eorith lets us untap two target legendary creatures. So the legendary synergy here is very strong. We have one, two, three, four, five, five ways of mana fixing. I like that. Um, I really like that. So this, I feel like this is going to be our build. Let me just grab Frodo from the back here. So Frodo needs to be tempted because he's a greedy little hobbitsis. I mean, that looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube what you think of this build. Is there anything in here that you'd want to take out? Anything that you think I should have left in? Uh, let me know. Also, in this scenario, it's very fair to just like swap out the Frodo we opened versus the Frodo in our promo pack. Um, that's probably totally doable because we're not using it as an extra card uh, but this has been really fun I think I've never actually tried a three co color card in a limited environment and I think that I could mess with this in a bad big bad way um, so let me know what you think about it in the comments below don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you can I would appreciate it very much follow me on all the socials I'm ERPMTG on TikTok and Instagram I am Wyatt Fawcett on Twitter. Uh, feel free to say hi anytime. 